What's up, everybody? It's Mikey Wine, aka Gun Demonium Works, and we are live. Um, what's up? We got one in the room already. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Uh, we're on part three of the Machining Krieger or Mike uh, Super Jerry project, and tonight we're going to be doing some. Uh, I'm going to be installing fiber optics in the cockpit, and uh, I li always leave out the 120 scale part. On um, anybody that's familiar with Machining Krieger or in the model community knows that uh, all at least I think all machining career kits are 120 scale. But anyway, um, something kind of just occurred to me. Like when I get done with this, I can actually put it alongside this guy and I'll show you here in a second because uh, everybody knows I'm a huge Macross fan. But if I bring the camera up here, oh, there it is right over there. Right up there is the 120 Gerwak sitting there on top of the cabinet because that's the only place it'll fit so that's why it's there so anyway yeah so um also last time we joined i was talking about uh, the canopy glue that i'm using on the uh to, to glue in all the fibers and the actual name of it uh, i was look, researching it because i was trying to Oops, wrong one. I was trying to find uh, what it's called. And it's actually the actual name of it is Simidine High Grade Model Adhesive CA-089. So you can find that on eBay. That's CA-089. You can find that on eBay if you want. Um, it works really well. I'm going to switch uh, cameras here. We'll go down to the bench and... I'll show you where we're at. And now my brother is blowing me up because he doesn't realize I'm on live stream right now. So it took me about a day to paint the cockpit and complete, you know, glue it all together and get everything flat coated and ready to go. Uh, a lot of times when installing fiber optics, you can put the fibers in and have them stick out slightly, do all your paint work, and then clip them off at the end. But because this was such a small piece uh, I just went ahead and painted I already had the holes drilled I just went ahead and painted it and then um, I'm installing all the fibers now so what I have here I've got some that are already in and you can kind of see on the bottom here there they come out of the back of the console and then they kind of tuck down I used my heat gun to glue you know not glue them but I mean I, I use them to you know, coax these down and, and, and make them tuck underneath the uh, um, the cockpit here on the side. And the reason for that is because when they go into the two halves of the, the cockpit, there's one piece that goes over the top here, and these have to kind of fit in inside of the frame, and I'll show that in a minute. Um, but what I wanted to do was also just light these up with a little test light that I have, and... That way you guys can see what they look like. Now, I'm going to be using red and white LEDs. So there will be two of them in the back here. Um, and these strands will be randomly kind of chosen, whichever one is red, white. So there'll be some red lights. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to do 50-50 or just do you know, a few. I think if I did anything, I would do maybe a little more. What's up, George? George is in the house. Angel's in the house. Uh if I do anything, it will be more white lights than red ones, but I don't know. Maybe I'll do 50 50. So, what I'm going to show right off the bat here is, and I got to put my five times magnifiers on because I'm going to clip off. I've got one of the strands here. I don't know if you can see it, it's sticking out right there in front. I've only got one left. I'm going to clip it off. I'm using a pair of God hands. I do not use these, by the way, uh, for doing this. <laughs> I'm doing it, but don't do it. And the reason I'm using these is because these are already broken. The blade's already jacked up. Um, they work really well, but the problem is, what's up? Oh, there he is. There's my brother. Now he's figured out that I'm not uh, answering his text messages, so now he's on my live stream. That is, uh, together we roll. Check out his live stream as well. I don't know if he does live streams or just recorded videos, but together we roll is a... D&D role-playing 
kind of a, it's a really interesting take on, it's just, it's more than just role playing because they have this huge 3D monitor and, and I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's really kind of cool. The way it sh they, they show the, uh, the game board is all done digitally, multi-view cameras, also all sorts of stuff. Really cool. Anyway, so I'm going to clip off this last strand, and then I'll, I'll use my uh, – I'm going to turn the lights off, uh, at least the overhead lights, so it'll kind of be a little bit darker in here. And that way I can show you what this looks like um, uh, when it's lit. Now, again, these are – I'm only going to use one color. It's just going to show you. It's just for demonstration purposes. So I've got to kind of get in close here and basically just trim this off right at where – consoles and that's it so now these are glued in the back they're trimmed off right at the surface of the uh, console and i'm going to use just a little test light here now these will eventually be routed to the back and then into an led which will be the light source but i'm going to just kind of temporarily get all these kind of the same length here and this like i said this is a white led i've got a red one i can show you both let me turn the lights down. Okay, it's going to get a little bit darker. That's okay. So I'm going to get this in my hand here where you guys can see. All right, so if I hold this like such, and I bring up, let's see here, if I bring the LED, there we go. So you can see those lights lighting up in the console. And that's the way they will look. when this is all powered up. Now to switch things up a little bit, I'll show you what a red one looks like. Okay, so if we bring this right about here, here we go. So we've got red lights as well. So like I said, what I'm gonna do, <laughs> you're welcome, David, no problem at all. What I'm gonna do is uh, like randomly kind of mix these strands up so there would be some red and some white as well. But for tonight, I'm going to start gluing more of these in using this uh, canopy glue. Oh, let's see. Yeah, who we got in the room? So there's George, Nick, David, Angel. Well, that's pretty much it for right now. This, at least this is the ones that have responded or put some in the chat. Uh, I pre-cut some of these uh, strands already. On the other side of this, I've got... I think six strands on this side there was uh, eight and then I've got six on this side of the back console but then I've got 15 on in the actual armrest console and then another 12 on this side so quite a few strands there's there's total of over 40 in the entire kit that I have drilled so far uh, uh, so before I do that there's one other thing I want to show you this is the nose cone piece of this kit and I'm going to be putting an LED in the camera here but there's also this this little nozzle here. So I thought, well, I don't, not really knowing what this is, <laughs> I think I would put some kind of red light in it. So what I've done, I have one strand of 0.75 millimeter fiber optics. Okay, it's pretty small. The rest of them are 0.5 millimeter. But what I've done is I bloomed the end of this. And what that is, is you can use either a um, a lighter or even a soldering iron you get it nice and hot and then when you bring this the the fiber up it close enough to it it causes that the end of the fibers to mushroom out and kind of form a dome it also gives you that kind of like it's almost like a light bulb okay so showing you what i'm talking about here it's a, it makes the piece slightly larger as well. So if I light this up, I put this underneath the back, but you can see that fiber light up, right? Let's see, there we go, just like that. Okay, so by drilling the hole inside this at 0.75, now that this is bigger, what I can do is feed this through, and then this will go in and actually stop when it hits that that hole in, in the bag. So now, if I take my bulb here, this is going to take a little tricky tricky hands here, but I'm going to get this sorted out. 
So I pull this back down inside. And now I light up the back. Now you can see the light inside the hole. And by blooming it, it, it kind of gives you that a little bit brighter uh, light or, or brightness. I should say a little bit brighter light in that area. I did uh, uh, a small 144 scale Millennium Falcon build. It was a, the, the uh, what you call the, the solo edition from the movie Solo, uh, Millennium Falcon. And I did that as a commission job for a friend of mine. And I used that on all the running lights. And it's kind of nice because they kind of, they just like I said, it makes it like a round dome. It looks like a bulb. Do, 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 do. Uh, Julius is here. How are you doing? For some reason, I thought today was Tuesday. Well, no. I'm glad it's Wednesday. I don't want to repeat Tuesday over again. Anyway, so what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to insert some of these fibers through the back. And like I said, I used my heat gun to coax these and, and shape them and tuck them in tightly. And I'll show you that before I start gluing any more in because the cockpit sits in here. And I painted the inside of the, uh, the halves here. And so when this fits in, now you can see how those are kind of tucked into the front because when the other half goes on okay this will go on like this all right now this top hatch or top piece has to fit over the top of this so that's why i have to kind of heat these up because otherwise they'd be in the way of this piece and i might have to clip trim down one of these little pegs are kind of alignment pins but these will sit just like this and that way whoop, lost it that way it's completely covered up and then you'll just be able to look through the glass and see those fibers so you got to be careful though you have to use heat to to shape them but be very careful especially using a heat gun i mean you can use a, a hair a hair dryer probably it might be a little bit better you'll just have to keep it there a little longer the heat gun works really fast, but if you're not careful, you can totally melt your strands together, and then who knows what, what's going to happen. Uh, hey, 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 Dave's in the house. How you doing, David? David Grinfell. Good to see you. I know you were talking earlier. <laughs> we were saying, I wish I could see one of your live streams again. I was like, well, if you're in luck, because tonight we have one going on. Let's go to Yes, Me Too. School in session. School, huh? Julius is doing school. I'm done. I only do school when I have to do training for work. Other than that, I think I'm done. So, this is the canopy glue. Works perfectly for this kind of stuff. It's a it's a mild uh, adhesive. It will not damage your fiber optics, and it's it's really made for for, for gluing on glass parts to a model kit. I found it uh, one day. I, I can't remember if somebody was doing a demo. Or or, so, or posted something on a on a, a scale like aircraft uh, page, and they were talking about this stuff, and it's it's really quite nice. But do not use CA glue. I said it last uh, live stream. Do not use CA glue on your fiber fiber optics. They will become brittle and break, guaranteed, and you'll have to do it over again. Hopefully, you won't. If you do uh, screw it up, you'll be able to start over. So I'm just going to insert these through the back. And you can go either direction. doesn't matter. But I want to make sure there's just a little bit left kind of sticking out through the front. And because this is coming off of a spool, they kind of have a curve to them already. So what I like to do is once I get one of these in here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So that's sticking out about an eighth of an inch or so, a little bit less. What I like to do is have them because I'm going to be wrapping them around the cockpit this way. So I'll kind of put them all with the same bend in the same direction. That way, uh, when I go ahead and glue them and, they, and they're, they're cured, you know, it'll be a little bit easier for me to shape them with the heat gun. Oh, yeah, so nice.
So I don't know. I know the obvious question is, is everybody ready for Christmas? Oh, I don't know. We're kind of doing a light one this year only because, I mean, we, uh, it's really been a, a rough year. So we decided, you know what, we're just not doing much. Okay, I got three there. I think I might have knocked one of my strands off the table here because I don't see. I had six of them cut out already. Once you get these set in here, I mean, you can have them sticking out, whatever, but you can adjust the uh, the distance that they're poking through the console when you get them all in. The whole idea is just to kind of get them in place and get them ready to go. You can see how they're just kind of curving out. They're just hanging out until I, I get ready to. So I might have knocked one of my strands off. I'll have to find that later. So I'm just going to bring up my roll of. This is my roll of point five millimeter fibers. Just going to take a little bit off at a time. And I'm just going to guess at the length here. I had cut all of them previously at the uh, same length, but I said I misplaced one. I might have knocked it off the table. So no worries. You're going to be trimming these later anyway, because as you um, as you start to shape these and then install them with a, a, a light source, you're going to be trimming them back. So. The length is just is negligible at this point. It's just really to kind of get them all sort of uniform. So I got one more strand here. Okay. I've got them all in. I've got them all kind of going in the same direction. Now I'm just going to Take this here and kind of push them back until they're all kind of sticking out just a little bit. I don't need much. I want them enough that I have some to trim off, but it doesn't have to be too, too much, but not too little either because you got to wait for the glue to set. So, all right. Question, can you paint? Okay, let me, sh let me bring that up on screen so we can all talk about this one. Can you paint the end of the fiber out of this to change the color instead of using color specific LEDs? Uh, I think you can. I'm just not sure about the color saturation. Um, because the fibers are so small, it might be really hard to see it. You'd really have to paint the end of it really, really uh, bright or just by colored fiber optics. I think they make that. Uh, they make different colors. I bought the bulk stuff from... Uh, fiberoptictorestore.com, but it looks like their website is down right now. I'm not even sure when that's going to come back or if they're ever going to come back. So I might, I might have to do some research and try to figure out um, if there's another, uh, one of my strands fell out, if there's another uh, source that we can find fiber optics from. Currently, I have enough in my stock to keep me going for a little while, but it will run out eventually. You pre-drill the holes. Yes, I did pre-drill the holes, David. Um, these are 0.5 millimeter. I've got a drill bit that's fairly close to that. It's slightly larger, but it's really, really close. So there's a little bit of tension, but not too much. You know, they slide in pretty easily. Um, I try to get as close as I can to the diameter of the fiber, so there's not a bunch of flop. You know, a little slop there and flop it around. Some of is hardly because it's been a rough year. Yeah, we're going to. We're going to, George. We're going to. I mean, I think we're going to, but we're just kind of keeping it mellow because <laughs> of everything that we're not, we're not buying gifts for everybody. We're just kind of chilling out. So what I'm going to do, I got a little bit of this glue. I'm going to bring my tube over here because this is kind of popping out. And I'm just going to apply this to the back on both sides and just let it kind of, you know, it's the same thing you do if you're using white glue. Just kind of you know, put enough on there that it goes around each one of the fibers completely, completely around. Both sides. 
it doesn't matter if you get a little bit extra on there because again this stuff is not going to damage anything one of these others kind of poke through a little further than i need so what i'm going to do before i go any further before this sets is i'm just going to push this one back okay so right now they're all sticking out roughly um a couple of sixteenths maybe an eighth of an inch at the most i'm just going to make sure they're all pointed the same direction we're just going to let those sit and dry so i'm going to cut some other strands here and get ready to start uh, installing these on the sides of the cockpit nice thank you you're welcome Nick. no i mean uh david excuse me no problem All right. This is a, kind of a fun part. It's a little bit tedious, but that's okay. The end result, I did this on the, uh, the 120 scale garage too. I used a lot of fiber optics only because I, there was just so much room. It was so easy. The smaller kit like this, it's a little bit harder because you really got a you know, tight squeeze, but, um, Uh, what was I going to say? Um, I think it really kind of adds an extra element than, than just a, a great paint job, you know. So I'm just going to pull out some of this. I'm going to push this aside just to kind of keep it while this sets. Now I could use the heat gun on it a little bit to help that dry a little bit faster. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to start trimming off some... Uh, some more fibers here. So these are going to wrap around the back. The, uh, the console on size here doesn't need to be too terribly long. Probably quite a bit shorter than the ones that are coming from the front because those have got to wrap around the front. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. I'm just kind of putting it up here. This is where the first two holes are kind of in the front. And they work their way back. So the, obviously the ones in the back won't, won't need to be as long either. So just to kind of get this to come around, I'm going to start right about here. And again, it's okay. You're going to have some waste here. You're going to have to trim these down. But believe me, it is way easier to trim them than it is to try to deal with one that's too short. So then you're really struggling. Because if you trim them too far, then you're just going, oh, God, now you got to try to get all your other strands to reach over. and So just cutting them all the same length. Cut one, and then, uh, I mean, the God hands work really good to cut this, but <laughs> I don't recommend it only because if you're trimming one strand at a time, you're fine. Because it's kind of just like plastic runner. But when you get a bunch of these strands all together at one time and then you try to trim them all, yeah, that's how you damage your blade. And I actually I've done it. That's why I'm saying it. I'm only using it, like I said, because it's an old pair that I've already broken the blade on. So I got four strands here. I'm gonna get out some more fiber here. I'm just keeping this taped because if I undo the tape, it's just going to unroll on me and there'll be a hundred feet of fiber optic all over the room. <laughs> so it's no fun. So I take out a little bit of a time and then I can trim it down and cut it. There we go. So, what's everybody else working on tonight? You got anything interesting going on? Okay, so. Oh, I know what I can talk about. Um, 
this camera that I've been using, I borrowed it from a, a friend at work, and I'm, I bought a new one. But the one that I purchased is not the same that I'm using here. The one that I bought myself is going to be, at least it's supposed to be, a slight upgrade from this one. Now, I'm not sure how much of an upgrade it will be. At the bench masking, nice. Masking hell, I'm assuming. Uh, it's not going to be, it's supposed to be a slight upgrade. So I'm hoping it is. It's a different brand, but it's called the uh, Oz, Obsbot Tiny 2. And it's probably the same size, just same features, but it has a higher resolution and maybe some other things that I can benefit from uh, doing this kind of video with. But I should be able to have the same camera angles, the same camera functionality, everything like that, that I've got now. So I got one, two, four, I got six strands total. I need 15 for this site. So this is the part that takes time. It's just cutting these all out. In the meantime, I'm going to only take one now. I don't need to be holding on to seven of them or more. Working on double my tie. <laughs> oh, darn. 21-year-old real rum. <laughs> oh, well, aren't we special? And on a, on a Wednesday night, even. Well, good for you, brother. I've got uh, a whiskey and Coke going from uh, Kurtz and Distillery. And I'm drinking, I'm using it with their, uh, their bourbon. So I guess it'd be a bourbon and Coke, not so much whiskey, but it might as well be. There is a restaurant manager that we go to on Fridays with some of the guys at work. It's an Italian restaurant. And I was wearing my t-shirt to uh, to work. So we, we, we went in there with that and uh, he was like, oh, what's that? What's that place? And I told him it's a distillery by my house. So he said he wanted a single malt, which they do also make. So I got him a bottle of single malt, and I'll be taking that to him this Friday. Double Mai Tai. Damn, dude, a double Mai Tai. What the hell? How do you get a double Mai Tai? I mean, I'm pretty sure I can figure it out, but still. All right, strands are going, getting everywhere. I'm trying to keep them all in line here. So I'll cut a bunch of these ahead of time. That way, it's just a matter of gluing them all, and then we'll use the heat gun later. I wasn't sure that the glue was going to set. It, it probably won't um, tonight. I may not be able to heat these up and, and, and bend them yet, but uh, crystal guys are sparkling lime and water. Well, good for you. Julius, being the responsible one on a hump day, I'm getting I'm getting plowed with twenty-one-year-old rum. <laughs> all right, yeah, pretty good so far. These are all roughly the same length, which is what I want. All right, oh, got to find the end here. Well, Tate's gonna have to, he's gonna have to bring that rum up here. Let me try it. That's what he's gonna do. Let's stop talking about it and bring it up here. And by the way, when I said what's everybody working on, I meant a project and not, you know, not a drink. But if your if your project is a drink, well then I guess that's what you're working on glass of water. Look at all these responsible adults. I guess it is later for you guys if you're back east, but I still got time here. Wife's making dinner downstairs. I can hear her working a, working hard. OK, 
Okay. Let's see how many I got after this. I know I've probably got to cut five or six more. But I'm just trying to get the majority of these pre-cut, so then it's just a matter of gluing them in. All right. Ugh. They just go every way, every different direction. So you got to deal with when you're rolling these around, they want to flip and go in different directions. So grab them all so I don't lose any. All right. There we go. Let's bring them all together. Ugh. Getting there, okay, there we go, it's almost. All right, that's better. So I got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, almost. I think there's one on the table still, so there's three, that's three. Four, five. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. So I need two more. And that will cover that side of the cockpit console there. And of course, these are clear, so when you drop them, it makes it really easy to find one on the ground. What do you use for a light source? Can all the strands, one light source, or do you have multiple? It depends. Um, David, I'm using LEDs, um, three millimeter LEDs. Um, the question is, what do you use for a light source, and can strands go to one light source? Yes, it depends on if you want to use multiple colors. Like, I'm doing white and red, so that's why I have two LEDs. What the hell? Are you guys still with me? It looks like we're there. Yeah. Wow. That was bizarre. Checking my uh, Wi-Fi. I've still got Wi-Fi. So let me know if you guys are still with me. That was strange there for a second. New comments. Oh, geez, everyone almost. Wow. What happened? I, I just went dark for a second, so let me get caught up here on the the questions here. What do you use for light source? Um, I'll answer that one. This is what I was answering. I use LEDs. You can use one light source if you're going to uh, use one color. I'm using multiple colors, so I'll be using two or more LEDs to, to light up individual strands. Uh, what I like to do is use a piece of plastic tube so I can funnel all of them uh, to one area and then have just a plastic tube just large enough for the LED to fit into one end, a short piece of it. That way when I install the strands that are focused to one area. Uh, hello, everyone, and most of all, hello there, Mike. Hey, what's up, Manny? How you doing? Looks like we're all good. For a second there, my screen went, uh, like my camera went dark on my side, and I was wondering what was going on with my Wi-Fi connection, because I am upstairs, but I was like, holy shit. That's only happened one other time. 
and I actually had to re, you know, start the computer or something. But it was fortunately I didn't lose the live stream. It kept on going. When I came back on, it was still there. But typically, I got pretty good Wi-Fi. I don't have issues. So I hope that answered your question. Um, if you're using multiple colors, yeah, then you're going to have to install multiple LEDs. You can buy pre-wired LEDs too, uh, for fiber optics that'll have some kind of uh, you know, a, a tube or something, something to focus all those strands. Let's see if I can show you if I've got a piece here. Okay, this is just a small piece. This is only the inside of this is a little too big, uh, but this is the, the kind of idea what I do. And this is too large for this LED. Well, I'll, I'll get a smaller tube where this fits right in and kind of bottoms out, and then I can wire the back of the uh, LED. But what I do by using this piece of uh, plastic tube is all these fibers because the LED is inside when you put all these in let's see if I can get them all to bunch together for a second so install these fibers in the tube okay now you've got your LED on this side and all of your your fibers on the other side and that way they're all um, the the, fo the the light focus will be right on those ends of the of the fiber and give you a good source. Why is this? What is going? On? Are you guys still there? I'm getting some weird functionality issues right now. This is strange. There seems to be a stuttering issue. Okay, that's what I'm. A fair bit of tape, but I'm seeing the finish line. All right, you froze. Yeah, I thought I did. Am I? Did I come back? Because my camera's my camera's live right now. Still here. Yeah, very blurry. Wow, what is going on with my? Huh. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the the quality issue. I don't know why. Didn't freeze on me. Okay. Yep. Still here. Graphics are pretty grainy. Didn't freeze. And George is still here, but video slow, low quality. Well, shit. Let me try opening up my door. I don't know if that's going to change anything, really. But we shall see. Yeah, I can see the, the Wi-Fi logo on my screen, and it does show it's pretty low, and I don't know why. Maybe it's time to bounce my router, but we're just going to try to power through this and see if I can go another hour here without dying on everybody. So one LED for multiple strands. Yes, that is true, David. Still five by five now. That's good. So yeah, you can put as many strands as you want as as long as you're you know if you've if you're using thicker strands or, or a whole bunch of strands, and you might need a larger tube to accommodate all that. But typically, these are pretty small at 0.25 millimeter, or excuse me, 0.5 millimeter. I can fit quite a few in one area. But again, I'm only using two colors, so it's just going to be divided in half. I'll probably get away with just fine with a three millimeter tube. And I'll use some gaffer tape to tape them in. Um, I've even, at times, I've even wrapped the fibers in tape and that will make it fit tighter in the tube if there's very few strands that we're lighting up at all so what do you use the power of the leds good question david um david grenfell i mean this is my my brother's also named david so <laughs> i'm saying david it's just because they're the only two talking right now that's good. Glad to see. Glad to hear, Manny. I don't know why my system's being stupid. <clears throat> what do I use to power them? In this case, I'm going to be using a three volt battery, because I'm only using three LEDs. I'm going to wire them in parallel, <clears throat> and run them off of a single three volt, and then they'll go in through a hatch in the bottom. I've got another piece here that, that I don't have on the table. Let me grab that real quick. 
Um, so, okay, so this is the, the main body, right? There's nothing holding this together, so it's going to be a little bit. I got to just kind of hold it together. And on the bottom, this is the bottom piece here. I cut out this little hatch, and then I've got a, a neodymium magnet here on the end that holds my hatch on here. So this will be my battery access for this particular kit. Um, in the past, I have like other things like the Valkyrie diorama that I did uh, a few months back. Uh, I ran a power supply out the bottom and actually ran it off a 9-volt battery. So I had several LEDs ran in series because typically most LEDs run on 3 volts. The only ones that don't are red. For whatever reason, they, they need lower voltage, it's like 2.8, 2.2 to 2.8 maybe at the most. Um, do I have a wire schematic? <laughs> Let me finish answering this one first. Um, so if I have multiple, like a bunch of LEDs that I can run in series, I'll run in series of three, and that way I can run it off a 9-volt battery and not blow anything up. Um, because I'm using 3 volts for this, I can run them in parallel, and it's it's a small amount of LEDs. I should be fine with a 3-volt. I won't know how long it will last until I power it up and, and actually let it sit there and run. You know, if it's sitting on a table in a contest or something like that, it might take some some uh some time to drain it down i might need to keep an extra battery on hand at the time but um uh, do i have a wiring schematic no but i do use a a tool let's it's let me see if i can find it it's a design program that designs your array for you you basically just put the numbers in most uh leds are a 20 milliamp uh, you got to, you know, uh, whatever your forward voltages are, which would be whatever the voltage the, the LED runs on. Uh, and then your source voltage, which is your power, your battery or whatever that you put those numbers in, how many LEDs you've got, and it will actually design your array for you and tell you where to put resistors, how much those resistors need to be and, and where to put them. And so let me look it up here. I've got it in my phone as one of these i'll see if i can copy this okay so it says it's a series okay, come on okay here we go so it's a series parallel wizard and you're going to put in your source voltage your diode your diode forward voltage which is what the led runs on and the milliamps like i said it's normally 20. the number of leds in your array and then you can do a wiring diagram. You can select schematic wiring diagram or ASCII, which I'm not sure what that is, and then click on design my array, and there you go. It will tell you exactly how many resistors, where they go, what they what they should be, and it does the math for you. What's the difference uh, in terms for wiring LEDs in series? Okay. So when you're dealing, I'll see if I can describe this the best I, I can. Um, when you wire something in series, it's going to be, it's going to go from positive to negative to positive to negative to positive to negative. I'm going to use three LEDs in series because that's typically what I do when I wire them in series because I want to run off a 9-volt power source. So basic math, you got each LED runs off 3 volts. You got a 9-volt power supply. So you basically have to run each one of those in series so it doesn't blow up the LED. If you if you run a single LED on 9 volts, it's going to pop right away. You'll, it'll go click, you'll hear it, and that's the end of it. It'll give you no warning. It's just going to completely grenade. So you have to be careful. If, in parallel, you're going to have all of those positive leads connected and all the negative leads connected. You can still do the same thing, but you're going to run only on three volts rather than nine volts. If you still, if you run three LEDs, but you're running them, you're connecting those positive and negative to themselves and having one lead for each when you hook it up to your power supply. So here's, here's a, uh, I want to blow this up so you can see this on the screen. This is, so for using three volts, 
with six LEDs and a one ohm resistor on each one, which is not really necessary. It's such a low resistance. It's it's kind of what it says. Um, you basically you run all you 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 see how you're connecting all of your positives and negatives together, and that's just going to run. In this case, this is an example of six LEDs on a three volt power supply. That's how you would wire it with a one ohm resistor on each LED at the end of it on the ground side. So the three volt is your power supply. This the other side over here is your ground side. And that's a parallel, that's a parallel wiring. In series, let's see if I can just randomly pull something up here. I will uh three. I'm going to do 20, and then number of LEDs will say 6. So here is a series circuit. So now you see the difference. You got 9 volts, you're positive, and then the negative goes to the positive of the next LED. That negative goes to the positive of the next LED, and then the negative on that side goes to ground. So you're running two series of three to make nine volts on each side, each uh, each leg of the circuit. <coughs> How do you attach them to a battery? Uh, let's go, let's see, what are we missing here? Anybody else? I need this app too. Uh, I will see if I can copy David uh, Grunfeld. I will copy and paste it to the chat here in just a second and see if I can, I may have to type it all in, uh, but if, if not, I will, PMU, the actual, um, uh, I'll just copy it and send it to you personally. Uh, but anyway, how do you attach to battery? <coughs> In this case, I'm going to take a little drink here because my throat's getting dry. In this case, I've got these little three volt battery holders. And this is for, where'd my test battery go? So this is for a CR2032, which is the uh, a nice big fat three volt battery, and basically pops in there like that. And you got multiple leads, and one of these is positive. There's two positive leads and a negative. You only need to use one, obviously, but but that's it. I will. Um, I might put a magnetic read switch in this, uh, which is just a normally open switch that when you put a small magnet to it, it closes the switch and completes the circuit. I may do that on the ground side to uh, to alleviate the ha having to remove and, and put the battery in every time I want to turn it on or take it off or turn it off. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I may do that. It might be easier to do that. And then uh, that's just something. That's why I ordered those uh, bamboo tweezers so I can actually install a battery without, or I mean install a, a magnet without them sticking to the tweezers. <laughs> What's the, what's the name of the app again? Uh, it is called, let me bring it back up. It is the LED series slash parallel array wizard. If you can find it, if not, if not, I'll try to copy it here. Uh, let me see what, let me go back. Uh, I'm going to copy the link here and i can try to send it to everybody individually here <coughs> excuse me while i clear my throat okay i'm going in the amfam chat i'm going to put it there because i know a majority of the people here are from the amfam chat and let's see i will find david do i have you on instagram or i mean not david wine but david grenfell do i have you on instagram or facebook i think it's got me Facebook. So I will take a quick second here. There we go. And I will paste that to you. Okay, there we go. See you, Angel. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. It's early night for you. 650? What are you doing? Or are you just going to blow up shit on Halo or something like that? Okay, and then I'll also send this to my brother. Uh, uh, where are you? I not have you. Yeah. All right. There. 
Okay, so I sent it to David and David, and I put it in the AmFam chat for the rest of the people here. If there's anybody else that needs it, just let me know, and I will uh, we'll send it to you. But that is the same little app. It's really it's really basic, but it, 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 for this application, it works beautifully because there's really not. I'm not using Arduino. I'm not doing any you know complicated electronics to you know, controllers and stuff like that. I mean, I could do that stuff, but realistically, this is just on off. I'm just turning lights on or taking them off. I don't need anything fancy. If I was going to do a complex, you know, uh, lighting program where there would be lights coming on and off or turning off certain times, then you might have to use an Arduino uh, board or something like that. But I'm not uh, that smart, <laughs> to be honest. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. So I just don't do it. I'll, I'll figure that out later, maybe if I ever need to do that. So, so. Oh, you're welcome, David. Uh, you, David says, I don't have oh, Instagram. Yeah, no problem. I sent it to you on Facebook. Uh, I figured, I, I kind of remembered one after I asked the question. I knew the answer. I was like, oh, yeah, because we've been talking on, on Facebook uh, Messenger. So we're all good. That, did I miss anybody on that? Did I miss any question? Sorry if I did, but please um, just send another one. If I did miss a question or something like that, just go ahead and throw it back in the chat, and I will get back to it. Sometimes a lot of comments come in at once, and, it's, and I might miss one. Not on purpose. All right. So uh, who else might need it? Did, did, uh, Manny, did you want it as well? I can send it to you, and I can... Uh, Let's see who else. I'm just thinking who else is in the chat. Uh, that's pretty much it, George. You can get it on AmFam. Julius, you might need it. I can send it to you. If, you, if you're if you interested, let me know. Just say yes, no, whatever, and I will send it to you. I think I got Julius on now. As well, let's see. Maybe I don't. Well, uh, oh, wait. I got you on Instagram, I think. I can't remember. Let's try this. Uh, there you are. You're uh, Julius 471, is that correct? By the way, LED emitting diode. Yes. So in the uh, it, diode voltage is the voltage spec for the particular LED. Yes, that is going to be either around 3 to 3.2 volts, or if you're using red LEDs, it'll be maybe 2.2 to 2.3. They use a really low voltage for red. Everything else typically runs on 3. I mean, even if it says it'll it'll run on 3.2, it'll run on 3 just fine. Julius 471. Okay, that's what I thought. So, to answer your question, David, uh, Yes, light emitting di the the diode voltage is, is going to be the the spec of whatever that voltage is. And like I said, you can find those anywhere an LED chart that'll show you what they run on. But really, red is the only one for some reason that needs a lower voltage that you have to use higher uh, resistors to run them. Everything else will run on three volts just fine and be happy without burning out. Okay, so Julius, I just sent that to you as well. On Facebook. Do, 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 Sent to me in the past. Okay, I did send it to you. <laughs> I know you guys have probably asked me about it. And sometimes you might not have asked me about it. I just send it anyway. That way I don't have to remember. So I'm going to start trying to insert. You're welcome, Julia. I'm going to try sending our... Uh, inserting more of these uh, fibers through. And I might have to actually, because I've got this other set going through or going down the back, I'm going to pop these in through the front. That way it's easier for me just to grab a hold of it and bring it through. All right. And sometimes uh, I have to glue one or two of these in at a time because they're just 
Otherwise, they just start getting all over the place, and it's hard to to manage. So by pulling one or two through at a time, just putting a little dab of glue behind it, and then moving on to the next one. Yeah, let's look at that array again. Um, so yeah, source voltage is your battery voltage, okay? So if we're looking at the screen here when it comes up, your source voltage is going to be whatever you're going to power the whole system with, whether it be 3 volts, 6 volts, 9 volts, whatever. Your diode forward voltage, that is the voltage that the LED runs on. And like I said before, uh, Typically, three volts will run most anything. It'll even run a, a, a red LED. It just might burn it out because eventually there's going to be too much there for it to handle. You know, like I'm using a red one here with my test battery, and only for a short period of time. If I if I ran the whole circuit on three volts for that for that period of time, eventually those red LEDs would burn out. That's why you need to put a resistor on it, and this will tell you exactly what kind of resistor, how much it needs to be, depending on your source voltage. And uh, typically, I always put the resistor on the ground side of the circuit, not between power and the LED. It'll be wherever your your ground side is. Uh, your forward current, your milliamperage, again, most LEDs, in fact, I think all run on 20 milliamps. So that number is always going to be the same. So your diode, diode forward current milliamps, that's going to be 20. Uh, and then you're just putting the number of LEDs that you're installing. And then hit design my array, and there you go. Pretty simple. How about a nine volt? There's adapter for those too. Uh, so yeah, you could use nine volts. It just depends. You could use nine volts on anything. I mean, you just need you're just going to use a massive resistor if you're using a, a low amount of LEDs. If you're only using like three LEDs and or one even one LED, you could run it on nine volts. You're just going to have to make sure you have a the right resistor in there to to take up most of that voltage, that most of that pressure, um, to so you don't end up blowing it up. I did it by accident. I was doing that that same commission I was telling you about that Millennium Falcon. I was showing somebody here at the house. I'm like, hey, check these lights out, and I'd forgotten that one of them wasn't in series yet, <clears throat> and I hit it with nine volts, and it went. I heard it go. That's all it was. It went pop. And it turned black. I mean, it was done. Didn't even, I mean, not even a second. Just barely touched it. So I literally had to cut a piece of the model apart, remove that LED, and install a new one, and then repair it and make it look like it was never damaged. I managed to pull it off. But, man, I was I was so upset. I was like, I am not going to deal with this right now. I knew I made a mistake. And it was just like, well, I guess I can fix it. But it's going to be tomorrow because <laughs> I was not in a good mood after I realized what I did but in the end it turned out great the guy that uh, it was a gift actually from a friend to a, to another friend that he knew oh, shit <laughs> that'll be fun I might have to redo these because I can't I can't get to the glue yeah there we go all right give me a second here. this is gonna be creative I'm trying to get to these two strands. I have to bend those out of the way. Okay, there we go. So I got two strands kind of coming through the bottom here. I had to move my other fibers out of the way. I get a good little spot of glue there for those two. Because I used my heat gun already and those were kind of formed. <coughs> They're kind of in the way. But I was able to pull those fibers out of the way, and now those can can dry. Pull them down just a little bit. All right. Gotcha. How do you attach them to the nine volt? Uh, I bought. In fact, let me show you. Uh, give me just a second. I've got to grab another little bin that has all of my wire leads in there. <clears throat> so I just went on I think it was either Amazon or eBay or something 
and I just bought a bunch of these. It's a nine volt battery lead. Pretty basic. Because what I tend to do is if I'm running series circuits, especially for a nine volt, you're going to have a lot of them in series. Well, once you have all of them in series, so you've got different circuits of three LEDs, like I might have had nine <coughs> different sets of three. But once those sets are, are wired, you can parallel them all down to two wires just by connecting all the positive and negative leads together. And then you got one one battery. So, yeah, it's just a just a simple nine volt battery lead. You can buy them at uh, some stores that sell LEDs or have electronics stuff like that. You buy them there. That's what I did. I like nine volts because it's a strong enough, it's a pretty strong power supply and it will last quite a bit. You know, three volt LED or three volt batteries work for a while, but they tend to, uh, they tend to poop out pretty quickly. So I like using nine volts if I can, just so I can plug it in and it'll actually run for a while. Although that beast I showed at the beginning of the show here, that, uh, that 120 scale Valkyrie, that one chews through a 9-volt battery pretty quick because there's a lot of LEDs in that sucker. <laughs> You're welcome, David. No problem at all. All right. So I think we're all caught up now, right? Let's see if we can uh, manage to get more of these glued in place. So I've got two more strings of five. There's two two little strands there. And then I've got five in a row and five in a row. So I'm going to try just installing those along this run here. And I've also, you know, meanwhile, I've got those others that I glued in earlier. Those are still in place. I'm drying. The glue is setting enough. I think it, it's holding enough that I can manip, you know, move this around and not damage it. strands clipped down here so I'm just this is why I pre-cut everything it kind of speeds up the process even though it takes a little while but if you're doing this one at a time it could be really way more tedious than it needs to be so I'm just kind of carefully pulling this through the back more then I'll run a bead of glue on the back of these once I get as soon as like dinner is ready in the background oh you're talking about <laughs> you're hearing the not yet I'm surprised you can hear that that's pretty cool now, I opened the door because I wasn't sure if that might be interfering with my signal I just, I, it, I don't know why my Wi-Fi was so horribly bad there for a minute. Oh, shit. I just dropped one. Nothing like dropping a strand of fiber optics. Here it is. Give me a sec here. I've got a nice big mat on the floor. Eventually, I'm going to replace it with a glass one once I start doing the floors in here. I've got wood flooring that I purchased a while back, but I've been waiting for the right time to replace it. Because that means I'm pulling the carpet up in this room. and so I've, I've got everything I need. Eventually, then I'm going to get myself a nice glass mat. 
for the, uh, my chair when I'm done with that. Now my wife's just downstairs. She's watching the one of her shows that one of her TV programs, her British comedies that she's been watching for years. She usually puts that on when she just wants something on in the background that she can listen to without worrying about it, you know. All right, so we got five, five in a row here. Whoa, that one almost came all the way through. All right, so I'm going to adjust the, I'm kind of angle these all the way to the back because remember there's a little bit of curvature to them. So I'm just going to kind of bring those, the length of those down, and now we'll. Hit those with a bead of glue. Looks like my other two are okay. They're still in place. It's always good to double check them because as you're moving this you know, piece around, sometimes you might bump one and you end up pulling a strand down or pulling one out. You got to make sure you can uh, reinstall it before the glue dries. This stuff's pretty uh, pretty easy to use. This glue isn't doesn't dry too terribly hard. It's it's a lot like Elmer's glue, to be honest. So I just got a little bit on the back. I'm gonna a little bit more on the other side of those fibers. making sure I get both sides of those. That's why I use a toothpick because it's easier to kind of tuck it in. And, and these are going to swivel around a little bit because they're not glued in yet. That's okay. Whoa, almost lost one. Saw it kind of sliding down, but the glue is going to hold it there. Okay, there we go. Now I can let that sit for a minute. Close up my glue here. Link where to buy the glue. Um, you missed it in the beginning, David. I talked about this, and I will look it up again, and you can write it down. It, it is available. You can find it on eBay. You just have to find a seller that's not selling it from, like, Singapore or some shit. Ooh, that's a hockey game starting. So um, the actual name of this, whoops, that's Amazon. I don't want that. I want Felipe. Here we go. Okay, so the actual name of this is called, here it is right here, Semendine CA-089 high-grade model adhesive. Uh, just wherever you're searching for, just type that in. Uh, the Semendine CA-089, uh, the 20 milliliter is, is the size. Uh, but this is the glue. I, I, uh, I don't remember where I got it. I, I think I ordered it on eBay. It, it's, it was a while before I actually used it for the first time. So uh, the tweezers I bought on, hey, Drew, I bought the tweezers on Amazon. Somebody, one of the guys here, one of the uh, previous shows sent me a link on Amazon with a set of like three bamboo tweezers. Those are all going to show up on Friday. Uh, so I got my camera coming on Friday along with the tweezers. And then... Uh, also, some some of my razor refills. You know, Amazon, where you get everything. You buy everything, right? Um, so, but this is the uh, the glue. And you just have to find somebody that sells it, you know, that you can find it and, get, and ship it to the U.S. Um, I don't know if you can find it locally or not. I haven't been able, I haven't really looked. I was just trying to find it, you know, that it is still available. Um but essentially, it's a canopy glue. It, it, the, the, the diagrams on the packaging show you using it in the, uh, you know, building aircraft, using it for clear parts and stuff like that because it dries clear. But it also works very, very well with, with fiber optics. So, how's it going, Drew? Haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you again. And again, I bought those on Amazon. Just, there was a set of bamboo tweezers. I think it was like three. 
like eight bucks or something like that. Uh, but please, uh, David Grenfell, do not use CA glue, uh, regular like CA glue like this stuff, the Bob, Bob Smith or any kind of CA glue on fiber optics. It will cause them to be very brittle. It will attack the, the fibers. They will, they will break. And like when I was trying to use the heat gun, like I sh earlier when I, talked about using that that's when they shatter on you and they just break right off right at, right where you glued them and then you're stuck with a fiber sticking out with no no way of fixing it unless you can somehow push it out from the back and re-drill a hole and, and save it because i had i figured i found this out the hard way but i was able to fix the project i was working on it just uh it was a it was a near disaster there for a second so okay i got Five more glued in here. We're just going to let those sit for a minute. I got another set of five and then three underneath that. So there's eight more that need to go in on this side. Let me see if I've got all eight here. I thought I counted correctly unless I accidentally dropped one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like I only got seven. So either I dropped another one or I miscounted, which is both options are quite possible whoa i'm almost losing almost dropping another one I'm trying to keep them all the same length so they're easier to manage but they want to they want to stick stick to my grip and not there we go okay so one two yeah i got seven so i need one more so we'll cut off another one here while we're talking about it That'll be this side of the, the cockpit. Then I have another three, six, nine, twelve to install on the other side. So chances are we're not going to get all these in tonight, but I searched for the glue and the US seller could not locate one. I just ordered two tubes from eBay from a Japanese seller. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, Julius, it's, I probably got it from a Japanese seller. I might have even got it from from uh, Japan when uh, 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 RB uh, Gunpla Works, um, our good friend, uh, gosh, why am I forgetting his name? All of a sudden, I am horrible. He was stationed over in Japan, and there was, we always had access to some pretty cool stuff. So when uh, Ryan, Ryan was stationed over there, that's when, uh, I might have got it there, I don't remember, but he said it's been a long time since I bought it. So I've got enough of this uh, already cut here for that one side. I'm going to wait on cutting any more until you'd be surprised how quickly you go through 100 feet of this stuff. This is 100 feet of 0.5 millimeter fiber optic. And <laughs> if you cut it out at four inches at a time, it adds up. And this, this is only uh, 40 plus. Uh, strands. There's another one I may do in the back here. Okay, there's a like an engine part that goes in this with a screen over it. I've also got a small hole here. I've, I've drilled that out, so I'm going to use a strand there and probably one here. The only different problem is is that there's actually a cover, uh, an armor piece that's going to kind of cover that up. But I think you'll still be able to see it from underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and put a fiber in there anyway, just to you know, just in case you if you get some sneakies looking around really close and they'll, they'll see that light back there. It might be kind of cool for them. Um, and then we'll have one on the top here that will be easier to see. And, of course, I got the 0.75 that's going to go in here and then another uh, LED in the camera. I'm still trying to decide on the color. What do you guys think? Uh, for a camera, should it be like an amber? 
yellow LED or white. I think white might not work. I think we better look like, like an amber color or something like that. So, and then I could also even light up, uh, let's see, where is it on? I thought it was on, oh, it's on the nose. This piece here, there's a glass lens that goes in this little oval. I thought about cutting that out and putting a, another LED there, but then I would have to rethink my power supply and stuff because right now I'm, it stands at three LEDs and that's perfect for a three volt battery. I don't have enough space for a nine volt. So unless I run it externally, which is another trick to figure out. Green. Yeah, our, yes. That is correct. What is the green for? <laughs> Amber is good or green. Oh, okay, maybe blue. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like I said, most of those run on three volts anyway. The only ones you got to really think about are the red red LEDs because they're, they're stupid low voltages. But uh, you can find an LED chart and show you that you know which ones run on what, but. I think I've got some some small amber, like 1.6 millimeter surface mounts that I could put behind that, and they're pretty bright, um, and that might work out because I can run the wiring in through the top. There's a hole. You kind of see that that hole. It's like a little half moon shape. That's that's a hole through the top, which will come out through the back here, and I can run the wires up through there and just and just glue a a small little surface mount LED facing forward. And then put this uh, this lens in front of it. This is what goes in front of that. So, whoop. so of course the the square portion around that will be painted. Just the bubble will be clear. And that's where we'll see the the light for that. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, this is that this is that clear. It's going to come like a football shaped lens. There's a that's what goes on that little that little bubble in the front here, up right there. So, if I did drill that out, I could put maybe a piece of fiber optic, but I don't know. I may just leave it clear, just not light it up. I might do a clear color over the top of the lens, maybe make the lens amber or something like that. But I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Green would look good. Yeah, it might. It, it might. It might it'd be a nice contrast between that and the red because I'm going to have that red light down this little hole. But other than that, this is really the only lights you're going to see on the external part of the kit other than the cockpit. So, well, with a couple little pieces of fiber optic maybe in the engine here. But, uh, yeah, something, something like that might, might look cool. Almost give you kind of like that night vision type of a effect right green would look good okay okay we're going with green <laughs> i think we're going with green guys seems like green is the consensus so well most of it george was thinking amber or green but he did say green too so all right so where are we at 20 minutes 10 minutes left uh, i'm just gonna let to see if uh See if these are kind of setting up a little bit. Feels like they are. It's starting to get a little stiffer. I know these are. They're not ready to, to heat up yet, I don't think. Yeah, they might be. I gave them a little bit of a tug, and they, they feel like they're not, not moving. So the heat gun is not going to cause any problems there. And if anything, it's going to help dry that glue limit. So... Here's the tricky part. I've got to, I've got to pull these down and heat them up and kind of get them. I've got to get them going this direction, kind of away from the side. So I got to pull them this way first and get them to bend down, and then I got to kind of coax them around the corner like this. So you kind of see how these, if you look at these, kind of went in and then around. That's what I got to do with this side. So I want these to kind of go down this direction first, and then I will pull them around the sides <coughs> and heat them up. So I don't know how loud this is going to be. 
but I will turn on the heat gun here. All right, try not to lose some of my fibers. Everything grabs a hold of everything, so it'll take a little bit of tricky hand work here. But basically, what I do is I just pull them down uh, and kind of hold them. And then, <clears throat> when you're using the heat, you have to watch the fibers. As soon as they start to move, you'll know they're getting hot, and then you can you can bend them into place. So I've kind of just bent them down toward the inside. I'm kind of holding them in this direction. I'm just going to put my finger on it, hold them to the bottom, and slowly heat this up. And you might start to see them move. There we go. As soon as they move, you kind of pull on them and they'll, they'll, they'll cool and, and hold that, that shape. They will separate a little bit because they're not fully set. But now that I've got them going in the right direction, I can pull them again. So I'm trying to get these to kind of come down a little bit more. Okay, there we go. There we go. Perfect. And see how those just drop. Now I can take them and go around the corner over here. Because now they're now that they're going. In, I can bring them around and I'll heat them up a little bit more right down here. Reshape. Once I get them to, to cool, then they'll pretty much hold that shape. See how I can let go. Now they're actually staying in place. Now these are all the fresh ones I haven't heated up yet, but I'm not going to do those yet. Yeah, that looks good. Those are going to stay put. The important part is this. So I want to take these halves now. Let me grab this. Let me get this heat gun out. All right. So let me see if I can sort of put this together. So pop this in place. I take the other side. Let's get this in place. I've got to get it in the right position here. There we go. These fibers are fighting with me. So we'll get it here. Here we go. So what is causing this to something's getting in the way. And I'll figure that out here in a second. Might be I don't know what's getting in the way. There's nothing in the way. I'm trying to get this to fall into place. There we go. Okay. For some reason, just didn't want to go. So now, as long as this sits right here, yeah, looks good. So that piece will sit on top. Looks like a little bit. One of these is kind of in the way. I mean, like I said, I was talking about earlier. I might have to trim this peg down because there's. A, it's kind of like an alignment peg. It really doesn't do much, but just sit on top here. And that's yeah, that's kind of getting in the way. I, I can see that little gap there. So I'll trim that peg down, and then that should be fine. This side looks like it's fitting perfectly. So once I get that out of the way, this will close up nice, 
and then we'll have all those fibers out of the way. Okay, yep, all my fibers are still looking good. All right. What's up, John Lynn? How you doing? And Voidbringer, good to see you. Sweet cock, it live again. <laughs> Change my mind. Go with fuchsia. <laughs> of course, George. We'll go with fuchsia. I'm not even sure they make a fuchsia. What is fuchsia? What is it? What does fuchsia look like anyway? Do they make it? Is it is it purple? Because I do have purple I like these, but. I even thought of something else that one might be cool. I, I have some flicker LEDs that actually automatically flicker. There's a little circuit board built into them. And uh, I thought, wouldn't that be kind of interesting to have lights on the inside of the cockpit just kind of flickering rather than being on solid. So still might go that route. We'll see. Um, in fact, I can show you what that looks like. I thought maybe, you know, if because the, the, the figure set that I have has guys, uh, you know, looks like looks like crew members. So I thought, well, if somebody's working on this thing, maybe maybe there's a malfunction going on. Maybe there's not the, uh, you know, maybe everything's not working quite right. Let's see if this one works. Let's see if this is a, oh, this is a red one. So as it heats up, you can see it kind of flickering a little bit. Blinking. Well, these aren't blinking, okay? I do have blinking LEDs, too, that, that flash at, at certain intervals. I've got some 6 hertz ones and 1 hertz blinking. They, those just flash on and off. These actually just flicker. So if you look at, if I can make it dark enough, you can kind of see... I could do that too. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Have maybe the white LEDs on solid and have the red ones kind of flickering. Something like that. I've got different colors of those too. I just have to find different ones. I've got red. Uh, it's like, let's see what color. Which one is this? Let's open one of these up. This is another set of flicker ones. Flickering is better. Yeah. I've got so many damn LEDs. Let's see. Oh, this is an amber one. So that, that's amber. <laughs> Make it look like it's welding? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I kind of like the amber one. Maybe for that... Uh, now yeah, shoot, maybe for that light up front. I don't know. We'll see. We've got some options. So the crew set that I'm talking about, I, I got this the other day before, actually after the live stream. It actually came in. So this is the, what the hell am I rolling over? A chair. This this mat's all jacked up. This is another reason why I got to redo the floors in here. So this is figure set A. It comes with four figures. Uh, one of them looks a lot like Lincoln Wright, which is kind of funny because he's like Mr. Machine Krieger as far as the as that world goes. Um, that would be this guy right here. Uh, I don't know if it's him. I don't think it's him, but it might it might as well be. Wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, Maki did that for him. But one of the things I did notice is the scale. This is supposed to be 120 scale, right? So we'll take we'll take the body here. This is the front half of one of these guys. And then we'll take the pilot figure. And we'll show you the pilot figure that came with the kit versus Andre the Giant here. <laughs> I think 
I think this is a lot closer to the scale than than the pilot figure. I think they had to make him smaller to fit in the cockpit, but I'm not using him anymore. The reason I'm not doing that is because all this work with all these fiber optics, we're going to be covered up with his arms. And when he sits in the seat, it, you can't really see any of the console. So I thought, well, why am I doing all this work if I'm going to have a guy in there? So I decided to do that. So we've also got a female figure here, too. So there's her standing up. And you can see... Whoops, Flip it around so it's right side. So yeah, that's just a that's a little bit closer. A little bit closer, maybe, but it does come with a cool set of decals too, which is kind of nice considering uh, you know it doesn't need to really. But another cool thing is it comes with gas cans, tools, toolboxes, like wrenches, pliers, all sorts of you know, kind of neat things uh, that came in that kit. So who knows what kind of little vignette I'm going to make this when I'm done, but it'll work out nice. It'll be nice. So, with that, my friends, uh, we are going to call this one an evening. Let me switch back to camera three. And we'll take off the magnifiers and say good night, everybody. I appreciate each and every one of you every time you come and join me hanging out and, uh, and, doing some building with me uh shout out to george old school gunpla check him out 6 a.m live stream that's 3 a.m if you're on the pacific coast if you can get up early enough to watch him brilliant brilliant guy brilliant show um yeah so thanks again again i appreciate each and one of you be good humans we'll talk to you soon we'll see you next week um i'm going to it should be that's after christmas huh yeah it should be cool we can do a Christmas wrap up. Uh, I've got some stuff being delivered from Hobby Link Japan. I finally got the release of the 172 scale uh, Max Batteroid to match the Q Ra. I'm going to say Q Ra because I can never say the Quigley of Ra or Rau or however you say that thing. So I got the matching scale Max Batteroid for that. And that finally released. So I went ahead and shipped everything along with some tools and supplies. Um, I'm also starting to put together a tool list, and I'm not promising anything yet, but I'm trying to come up with something similar to what Tim Harkins did, where he uh, uh, had an Amazon link that you could go to, like, and any of the things that I use, tools and supplies, I will put that up there, and you guys can check it out, and if you need anything, you can go right there to one source and find it. So... I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm looking into it. I may not do that. I may. I may not. We'll see what happens. But um, thanks for LED 101. You're absolutely welcome, my friend. Tool list. Yes, uh, that's what I'm working on. Something like that that we can uh, have a common place to go to where you can see you can use and buy the things that I use. And who knows? We'll see where that where that rolls up. We'll see what happens. Uh, I got to talk to Tim, see what he did to get it started. Um, <laughs> also, uh, figure out uh, I can watch some sure watch a few uh, Amazon uh, or YouTube videos on how to do it. So we're, that's what we do, right? We're YouTube certified, YouTube certified mechanics. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that being said, thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. Catch you next time. Uh, be good humans. Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll see you soon. <laughs>